Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Chris and I'm a collector, okay? Not no ordinary collector, okay? Back in grade school, I was collecting Pokemon cards, I was collecting Beyblades, I was collecting everything, bro. Everything that I could find. Marbles, bro. Who the hell collects marbles? Freaking me, of course. If you fast forward to today, I still be out here collecting things, okay? I like to go on hikes. I like to go herping. I like to get out of the house and just enjoy nature. So when I do get a chance to go outside, whether it be skating or hiking, if I come across an animal, you best believe I'm going to take it home. Not all animals, of course. You know what I'm saying? If it's endangered, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to touch it. If it's dangerous... Okay, I might touch it. But if I come across something that is way, 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 way bigger than it usually is, or something with abnormal colors or color patterning, you best believe that I'm taking that thing home. You best believe that I'm gonna flip that rock, find the creature, you know what I'm saying, capture it in my hands, grab it in my hands, put it inside of the container, snap the lid shut on the container, stick it in my backpack, okay? Put that backpack on my back, start walking home, you know what I'm saying? Build an enclosure for that animal. Challenge clear. And then place it on the medicinal shelf. <laughs> yes, the medicinal shelf. That leads me to the idea of this video. Since I've done this so many times with so many animals, I might as well make a whole update video on all the animals that I've caught in California, SoCal to be exact. So without further ado, I think it's time we oh, jump right into this video. Let's get it. So first animal of the day, hold up, hold up. Gotta get my sip of the coffee, way. That's your boss. In here, we got a Jerusalem cricket. Ayo, where my Jerusalem cricket at though? What? Hello? What? Hello? Hello? Is, is it me you're looking, you're looking for? for? Okay, I already made a mess. Are you serious, bro? Are you serious, bro? You're just gonna be out? <sighs> this is the Jerusalem cricket. He's doing pretty, pretty amazing. I actually have another one. And hopefully one matures into a male and the other one matures into a female so that I could get some breeding action going on. And yeah, that would just be an amazing video to make. It's oh, yeah. the here, vanilla. His little fingers, as you can see, they're very, very spiky. Those help him to like hold on to whatever he's climbing. But yeah, you could really feel the spikes, okay? And I got some, I got some rhino skin, okay, bro? I got that ash on my ass. What did he say? Hey. You know, look at that ashiness, okay? I got that rhino skin. It's thick as hell, and I could still feel his little spikes on my skin. Okay, you're getting a little bit high there, bro. Calm down. But yeah, man, this is my Jerusalem cricket. There's not much else to say about it. I'd be feeding it pupas. Look, this is what I actually feed my Jerusalem cricket. This is actually pretty cool, I think. Watch this. Okay, I'm just gonna leave you right there. We got a blast. We got a blast from the past. Oh yeah, I keep them just right here, ready. Just waiting, yeah, yeah, just waiting. Now these aren't wild caught, but they're still gonna be in the video anyways, because this is the food item. And hopefully you could eat it live on camera. He probably won't though. If you don't know what this is, this is a darkling beetle larva or pupa, not larva. The larva is the actual worm stage, you know, super worms. Super worms, they turn into darkling beetles. But the in-between stage of worm to beetle is actually this thing, the pupa. So yeah, that's pretty cool. This thing loves to eat this. Okay. Oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. It's a good source of protein for Jerusalem crickets in the wild, if you think about it. Mostly you find Jerusalem crickets under rocks, right? And usually when you find larvae like this or pupas, they're gonna be under rocks. So in the wild, they'd be coming across things like this all the time, you know, pupas, moth cocoons, you know, beetle pupas, all that type of stuff. And they're just ravaging through those gooey insides like no one's business. So yeah, that's what I'd be feeding him. I also feed him some lettuce and all that other stuff. So let me show you the other Jerusalem cricket and then we'll move on to something else. And you're actually gonna notice something different about this Jerusalem cricket compared to the other one. I, I won't say it in the beginning just to have you guys, you know, hopefully guess, but I doubt oh, that most of you guys will even be able to tell that there's a difference. Oh, look at this dude right here. Look at this dude right here. Oh my God, he's a beauty. Oh. He's a beauty. So, can you guys actually notice the difference? Hmm? Can you guys notice the difference? So, here's a better shot of the cricket. And, yeah, I'm gonna say it right about now. So, good luck, guys. That was so... What the, what the hell am I saying, bro? I'm actually... I sound so fake right now, dude. So, you guys see the head of that Jerusalem cricket? Yeah, y'all see that head? You see how it has those black markings? The other one did not have those black markings. 
And the reason for this, hopefully, because I just discovered that there's actually two different types of Jerusalem crickets. Hopefully, this is a painted Jerusalem cricket, which looks like this. Yeah. Y'all see that? That thing looks hella cool, bruh. I'm hoping and praying that this is a painted Jerusalem cricket. I found some food that it was eating on before. So y'all remember how I was talking about the pupas? As y'all can see, this one just got finished eating one of the pupas. You could just see the little remains. That's actually the head of the pupa or the beetle that was inside the pupa. So yeah, you could see the antennas and the little mouth parts of the beetle, plus its little faintly colored pupils. So yeah, that's actually pretty cool, bruh. Now let's put you back, dog. Hey, stop trying to escape, bruh. You better not try to get some of my coffee. It's mine. It's mine! Freaking head ass boy. Here, come on. Yeah, thank God they're not biters, dude, because uh, I'm... <laughs> hey, calm. Oh my you. gosh, dude. Okay, literally stop. I'm so clumsy. I'm literally so clumsy. I'm my bad. My bad. My bad, pimp. I should smack the out of you. Oh, look at you. Look at you. So beautiful. Oh, yes, he loves to get pet in his squishy bottom. Squishy, 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 Okay, it's freaking been three minutes. God damn. So next up, we got this bad boy right here. So this is hopefully, hopefully, and I am hoping when I say this, a tarantula. Okay, it looks to be a tarantula just because it seems to have urticating hairs, but it also has a silvery color to it, which is a sign that this might be a false tarantula. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's up in the air at this moment, okay? I'm not 100% sure what species this is. I'm hoping that it's some sort of desert tarantula from California. You know, there's many species that live out in California, so it's hard to identify them. Either way, I'll be hella hyped on whatever species of spider this is. So it's been doing amazing in this enclosure that I made for it. I got some cork bark, got some coconut fiber, some oak leaves. He could do whatever he wants with it. I've noticed that he can web, but he chooses not to web up the enclosure. So it's been a week since I filmed that part of the video that you guys have just seen. And a little update, the spider did indeed web up the oak leaves, so it already terraformed its enclosure. I just was not aware of it because for some reason when I built this enclosure, I thought I placed the leaves right there like that, but obviously I didn't because who the hell, that's, who, who does that? So the spider did indeed terraform its enclosure. It grabbed all the leaves except for one, that stupid one right there. He grabbed all the leaves and put them to one side of the enclosure, made a little hide area. Wow. Like so, used his web to web up the leaves. As you can see, I don't know if you guys could see that, but yeah, there's some web. And yeah, the tarantula has been doing amazing. You could also see that the tarantula is much fatter than the last clip because it's gotten a few big fat meals into its stomach since the last time you've seen it in the last clip so yeah it's been adjusting hella well to its captivity so yeah let's move on to the next animal bro oh my gosh he's so cute look at that little butt look at the little butt those have to be urticating hairs bro you guys see that that has to be urticating hairs i love this thing and you know what should i just hold it should i just do it I'm, I'm literally just gonna do it while i'm talking about it I said I'm not afraid anymore! Do you hear me? I'm not afraid anymore! Oh, oh. Help me! So, in this enclosure, I used to have the substrate go all the way to the top right here, you know what I'm saying? But I changed that out because once I had the substrate like that, I wouldn't even be able to notice whether the centipede was alive or not because the dirt was just taking up so much of the enclosure that he would literally spend all his time down beneath the substrate so it just made it impossible for me to feed him in order for me to feed him when the substrate was that high i would literally have to dig him up like i am doing right now this is what i would have to do and once you dig up a centipede it's stressed out to the point where it's not going to eat for you anymore so it was just overall a bad system it was just not a good system it was not working whatsoever so then i changed it out so yeah i decreased the size of the substrate to the the point where it only takes up about this much of the enclosure and ever since then he's been taking down meals like an amazing person you know what i'm saying whenever i need him to take down a meal he'll take down a meal and yeah oh oh my god this is literally my fear i don't like centipedes what am i doing that was that was very very baby of me i need to get over my fear of these goddamn things bro if i get bit i freaking get bit bro Oh. 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, one more time, one more time, one more time.
Borneo Blue Centipede. Actually just got envenomated. It's not too bad. All that footage of a guy holding the centipede, you know, that freaking beast that was not afraid of any centipedes, was from a YouTuber named General Apathy. Go check him out. He makes some great videos. And I highly recommend you watch his videos. So yeah, just do it already. Freaking clowns. No, I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Come on, I'm gonna hold this dude. I swear to God I am. I swear to God I am. Y'all y'all don't believe me? Y'all think I'm scared of centipedes? Yes. Y'all think I'm scared of centipedes? Nah. Come on. Hang on, bro. Why are you scared of me? A few inches later. This is why I'm scared of centipedes, bro. I had this dream once, right? I was attempting to hold my Vietnamese giant centipede. Yeah, that huge thing. And it was like 30 times bigger than it usually is in my dreams. And bro, when I attempted to hold that thing, it just started biting the hell out of me, bro. Like I'm talking about... It was so surreal. That thing was just clawing its freaking pincers right into my skin, dude. And it was, yeah, I just, I just froze there, letting it happen because I didn't want to harm my centipede. And ever since that dream, bro, I've been scared of them. But I'm just like distracting myself because I'm literally holding the centipede right now in front of the fans, in front of the camera. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look how cool this, oh, oh, he's scaring me. I need to calm down. Why is he freaking, why are you walling your freaking face around like that, dude? Stop, you're, you're suspect. You're the imposter. No, you're you're absolutely suspect. You're mad suspicious, my guy. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is taking up way too much time. Oh, oh, but this is so cool. Oh, this is so cool though. Oh, this is literally so cool though. Come on, flip back around. Ah, ah. Is it biting me? I'm scared to look. I think it's biting me. Boy. Oh, get off. Get off. I can't. I can't. I need to stop yelling. Why am I so scared of this freaking, it's not even that big. Freaking get on the ground, dude. Yes. I did it! What the f***? You're nasty for that one. So, that's the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed, you know what I'm saying? Sorry for the late upload. I got a little caught up with school. Bunch of other stuff that I'm working on. I got some things up for the channel. Well, I'm working on some things for the channel at least. And yeah, bruh. My bowler is literally just giving me love time. Okay. So yeah, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. You know what I'm saying? Do all that YouTube stuff. Hit the like button. I finally realized why the push notifications bell is like actually important. So yeah, usually I would say don't hit the push notifications, but hit the goddamn push notifications. Also, you the one tool, y'all mean, you know what I'm saying? You're actually supposed to punch with your left and then your right. That's how you get that. That's how you get that power. So just to let you know, left, then right. And then you kiss him on the forehead. Okay, just like that. So yeah, guys, like, comment, subscribe. My boa did not fall because I got skills and I'll see you in the next one. Late. Late. Ah ha 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 